What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the Hook and Arrow channel. I haven't made a video in a while and I thought we'd start this year off right. This hunting season off right, I guess you should say. We're going to do a little story time today. We're going to talk about how I got into traditional archery. And I got something special just showed up in the mail. So I've been bow hunting almost my entire life. I think I picked up a bow when I was six or seven. I killed my first animal when I was 10 or 11 down in South Texas on the King Ranch. It was a javelina. It was an awesome trip. So when I was 16 or 17, I picked up a recurve. My goal was to kill a deer and I did it. I killed a doe with an old Martin 50 pound single piece recurve. Well, after my moose hunt in 2015 where I killed that guy, I was kind of bored with hunting whitetail here in Texas. So I made it my goal to get back into trad hunting. Now this was before the whole trad bow craze and all these guys who started thinking they were cool by hunting with a traditional bow. But I will tell you right now, I was awful. I could not shoot past 10 or 12 yards and anything past about 13 or 14, my groups would open up the size of a paper plate or bigger. It was bad. I did okay that first year of hunting. I think I killed a doe and a couple of pigs, but it wasn't great. That next year, I got a Sarles Blue Ridge SR Longbow. And that was my first fancy trad bow that I ever owned. And that year, I think I was able to kill 19 pigs and two deer, including this buck right here in the middle. To this day, in my 20 years of whitetail hunting, that is still my only Pope and Young whitetail. He scored right at 146 and I shot him at five steps from my blind. Now that brings us to today. I had a pretty exciting mail delivery. I'm gonna show it to you. So since I went back hunting mostly with a compound, I ended up not shooting that bow at all. It sat in the closet for a year or two didn't shoot it at all, and so about a year ago, I decided to sell it. This bow's name is Sacagawea. It is almost identical to the Sorrels Blue Ridge SR that I used to hunt with and that I killed all my animals with, except this one is both left and right handed. So one thing that makes this bow so cool is it is a bow that a member of texasbowhunter.com purchased. And he sends it around to different people around the state of Texas, or the country probably for that matter, and they get to keep it for one month and document their shooting, how they liked it, what arrows tuned out of it, and hopefully a couple of them get to kill some stuff. And right now is my month to have this bow. Man, look how pretty the limbs are on this thing. This bow is awesome. So my Blue Ridge SR that I had was, I think right at 51 pounds at 28 inches. So this one is a little bit lighter. It's 47 pounds at 28 inches. And this bow, the overall length is 60 inches. And I will be completely honest with you. I knew this bow was a uh, Blue Ridge SR. I had no idea that it had both a left and a right handed shelf. That is pretty cool. All right guys, we got this thing strung up. First thing when you're shooting a trad bow, is you gotta check the brace height, make sure it's where it needs to be. And if my memory serves me correct on the Cerro's Blue Ridge that I used to have, I kept it right at eight and a quarter. And this one is right there. So I think we got this thing, we got this thing twisted up right. And next thing I'm gonna do is I like to shoot with two knocking points. So I'm gonna tie another knocking point on here. All right, so. Got my other knocking point tied on there, as you can see. So now we got two knocking points. And you know, this bow should tune very similar to the old bow that I had. And since I only get it for a month, I'm not going to spend a ton of time tuning it. I'm probably just gonna shoot what arrows that I already have set up for my recurve. And so the arrow I have set up for my recurve is a uh, traditional carbon, XL Hunter Pro, whatever, I don't know what they're called, hell. Gold tip, traditional, 400 spine. I left them full length and I have a 100 grain brass insert and then I think 175 grain field tips on here. And then I'm uh, going to break the laws of traditional and I'm shooting the new AAE vein. Man, they're like half the price of feathers 
and they seem to fly pretty good out of my recurve. You don't have to worry about them getting wet. You know, you have to replace them a little more than feathers, but I'm trying this this year, seeing how it works, I think it's gonna be a good combo. I four fletched them. So it just got dark on me outside. I'm probably gonna go shoot some arrows tonight. I'm gonna see how this thing's shooting, see how it's flying, and tomorrow we're gonna go hunting. I've got a group of pigs coming in at 5 p.m. every day on the dot. And so I'm gonna see if I can't get to where I'm killing with this thing at 10 yards. I'm gonna go throw some corn 10 yards from my tripod and we're gonna see if we can't kill a pig. I think we can. It'll be fun to try anyway. All right guys, so I've been out shooting this thing for about an hour now. And man, now I remember why I quit. <laughs> I've been shooting a recurve a little off and on the last month or so, but God, this thing is frustrating. It shoots so good. It's the most buttery smooth bow ever. But with this sight picture and just the way the arrows fly, my uh, my eyes a little off. I'm hitting, hitting left if I try to shoot it instinctively. So to combat that and to kill a pig tomorrow, we're cheating a little bit. Basically, I'm string walking. I put a knocking point here to where when I address the bow, address the string, I can grip it down here. What that is doing is bringing the arrow a little further up towards my eye. And at 10 yards, which is how far I'm gonna put the corn, I can literally put my point on my target and make a shot and it hits there. So I'm shooting about a baseball to softball cantaloupe-ish size group at 10 yards right now by doing the string walking technique and by putting my point on um, I can basically hold anywhere from an inch below the belly to right on the heart and still be both lungs, you know, heart, lung area, still keep it in the kill zone. So that is the plan tomorrow. We have this bad boy ready to go. We're string walking on him and we're going to go kill a pig tomorrow, get it on film. I will get some footage first thing in the morning when it's daylight of me actually shooting this thing at the shop before we go out hunting. But I'm pretty excited. I'm gonna, gonna, gonna kill something with old Sacagawea tomorrow, for sure. What is going on everybody? As you can tell, it is now the next day. And I listened back to some of the things I recorded last night, putting it on the computer, and I realized that I am stupid, okay? I had the dates all wrong. So when I actually hunted really hard with a trad bow was in 2013 and 2014, which was before my moose hunt in 2015 and I killed that 12 point that scored 146 in 2014 but everything else is right you get the idea I have a little bit of history shooting a trad bow but I will tell you right now I suck at it I'm not a good shot and shooting that bow last night reminded me of how much practice and how much patience it takes to really shoot a trad bow and be good at it and you know I don't know if I have the time anymore with work and two little kids to put in that time to be a good trad, trad bow shooter, traditional archer, but we're going to go shoot this thing a little bit more today. We're going to take it out tonight. We're going to see if we can't kill a pig and we're going to give it our best shot. We'll see how it goes anyway. So I'm headed down to my feeder right quick. I haven't hunted this stand in over a year, so I know there's some limbs that are in the way that I'm going to have to cut and I'm going to have to move. So. Let me show you this stand. Let me show you the setup for tonight. And we'll pull this memory card and hopefully these pigs are still coming in during the daylight. We'll see. So there's corn on the ground right now. That means they didn't come this morning. So I hope something hadn't boogered them up and they still come this afternoon. I guess we'll see. Well guys, I'm having a little issue here and the fact that I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna set my camera up tonight. I don't really have any trees that I can put a camera arm on and I'm too high for a tripod and if I attach my camera to this uh, stand here can't really see very good so I've got to figure that out for sure I got my shooting lane cut right here shot should be about 10 yards you can see the feeder over there a little ways but I'm gonna put corn right here make it a pretty easy shot
just here at 10 yards, just making some shots. I'm string walking, putting point on, kind of cheating a little bit. But, however, if that's what it takes to kill a pig today, that's all that matters. Ooh, that was bad. on at 10 is looking good. I think we're good to go. All right, everybody. Excuse me, I'm trying to talk here. It is hot as shit out here today. But we're heading down here. The pigs didn't come in last night until like 1 a.m., which kind of has me worried. However, the whole rest of the weekend, they were there at like five o'clock, right, right on the number. So we're gonna go down here and sit. If the pigs hadn't come in by like 6.15, 6.30, we're probably going to get out of here. I didn't even bring a hog light today. We are dang sure not staying until dark. So let's get down here, see if these pigs come in, see if we can't get it done with the trad bow. Well guys, that sucks. That is not what I meant to do at all. Um, what really sucks is I wasn't even the one that spooked them. My dad walked out of his house, got in the truck, started it upwind of my feeder about 200 yards, and I don't think they like that. So we're gonna head back on in. I think I've gotta go back and find my sunglasses actually. But we're gonna head on in and uh, maybe, maybe we'll see a rabbit on the way in or something. What really sucks is I watched those pigs for like 40 minutes. And I could have shot them all day long with a compound. Oh man, this definitely doesn't help uh, trying to push me towards shooting a trad bow. I had put some hand corn out at about 12 yards and they just never found it. They were staying under the feeder because there were two spins right there under the feeder. And so they didn't make it out to my hand corn, which sucks. I'm kind of pissed. <sighs> oh well, what can you do? Well guys, we got him. But I learned a lesson here today. Don't shoot a Simmons tree shark at a rabbit because it, it doesn't leave much left. We're gonna see what we can salvage of this thing and uh, maybe fry up some rabbit. I'll be good. I just uh, I just hope I can salvage some. It cut his whole back leg off.
but we know the sorrels, Sacagawea, it can kill something.